Hey, what's up everybody? Sean here with another Live to Roll video. Uh, this week I'm finally going to do my AMA or Q&A or whatever. So I printed out all the, or some of the questions that have recently been asked or that have been asked multiple times. So I'm just going to read a couple off and then try to answer them as best I can for you guys. Alright, F and A, let's start. <laughs> Alright, uh, we got from uh, Rodrigo Suarez. Hello mate, you always post very informative stuff. I have a super pubic catheter as well. I'm a T3 complete. I have, uh, sorry, I just have a couple questions. How often do you cha change the actual catheter and how often do you get UTIs? Um, so basically for the catheter, I actually change my catheter every three weeks. Um, I used to change it every four weeks or like once a month, but it started getting too much blockage in the catheter and I was getting it built up. It was starting to clog up and block up a little bit. So I switched it to every three weeks, um, almost five years ago, and I've been doing it ever since, and it works really well for me. I have a lot less UTIs, a lot less blockage, just a lot less issues with the catheter. And then for the UTIs, I get UTIs bad enough to take an antibiotic once or twice a year, um, pro on average probably once a year. Usually if I start feeling like I'm getting a UTI or my bladder is a little bit messed up, I will just try to drink a lot of water, which I already do drink a ton of water. Um, and then besides that, I, uh, I also take cranberry pills morning and night, and then I also take D-Monos um, mostly every day. Um, I try to do it every day, but sometimes I'll forget that. And then, but if I am feeling uh, a UCI coming on or something, I make sure to hit the D-Monos, and I'll do that maybe a couple times a day for a couple days, and it usually kind of flushes itself out and I feel better, so that's, that's about it for those. Um, and then, all right, so let's uh, keep going here. Um, does the catheter stop me from living life? Um, no, I don't think it does at all. You can still go swimming, like I go, you do all kinds of stuff. You can pretty much do anything. You just don't have to go to the bathroom as much. <laughs> so you don't have to, if you're, if you're self-cathing, for a quad, I don't know, it's definitely, pretty hard. I, I don't know if I could do it or not. If I really wanted to try it, I, I might be able to figure it out, but I never had the desire to. Uh, I like my super pubic. It works fine. Um, it, it doesn't bother me much at all, and I, I don't let it stop me from doing much at all. <laughs> all right. Um, is that it for the catheter questions? Oh, no. Oh, sorry. One more cath couple more catheter questions. Um, here we go book junkie or the book junkie uh, he also has a super pubic um, and uh, when d he's stating about when I when I don't have <laughs> sorry I guess I'll just read the whole thing uh, when I don't have the perfect gauze sponges I alcohol swab my scissors before cutting the slit when I wasn't doing that I wound up with copious amounts of blood and ooze coming out around the hole it was pretty gross and soaking through four layers of gauze pads and rather horrified the urgent care people. Uh, it was a few months after my super pubic was done. Um, sorry, I didn't print the whole rest of it out, but I will read the rest. <laughs> um, so uh, basically I usually do clean, make sure the scissors are very clean. I have three pairs of scissors that I use and that one just is the worst one and I've actually thrown those away since. Uh, and the blades weren't very dirty. It was actually the hinge that was just like, over time hadn't been cleaned and the hinge just was gross and really hard to hard to close or open so that, that thing was just a pain and um and uh let's see here sorry so <laughs> um and i definitely do cover with the gauze and if i do get an infection a bladder infection or i've even had my catheter site infection and that's usually when there's like the blood and ooze that means you have an actual infection at your catheter site usually that that's what i've found and i've had that a couple times where I've needed an antibiotic ointment to actually rub around the catheter and, and like on my gauze to keep it all day and night and change that every time I change the gauze. And I also, I do, if I'm feeling a bladder infection or if I know I have one, I will change my gauze and use a new gauze at night. But usually I just take the gauze off and clean the catheter and don't put a gauze on for the night. Um, which actually, the book junkie also asked again about that, um, about securing, oops, sorry, <laughs> about securing um, my catheter to something like uh, on my drain bag for when I'm in bed. And uh, 
It says uh, having mind secures having mind security takes a lot of the worry out of getting it pulled out through the hole for me. Um, most of the time I wear scrub pants so no one can tell if I'm dressed. Um, well, uh, yeah, so for the, the reason I actually don't anchor it, I tried a couple times to strap it to my leg to tape it down or something, but that just didn't work for me. It actually, every time, because I always will kick up my leg, I start flat and then my legs kick up and I'll roll onto my side, usually my left first. And when I do that, it was like no matter where I placed it, it seemed like it would form a pinch in the catheter. So with it not connected, I can just roll over and it just moves to the side and is not under my body in any way. So it's just uh, a lot easier to deal with like that because um, I, I'm just less worried about it. I, I know <laughs> it's just a bas basically everybody's own preference, you know, however you feel comfortable doing it, it's probably the best way to do it for you. So like if you, if you, are more comfortable with it being anchored it, it probably is safer I actually have ripped the catheter out one time um, I think about a year or so after I got it initially um, I did that by trying to grab some sheets and I like I wrapped my arm around the sheet because it was stuck on something and I yanked I think it was under my foot or something and I yanked but didn't realize I'd also wrapped up the catheter so when I yanked I literally I, I yanked the catheter right out of my uh, right out of the hole. Um, the balloon was full, just right there. Uh, it was pretty scary. I was able just to call my brother. It was like 3.34 in the morning, but he woke up, came down, and I was able to like walk him through the catheter change and how to do it, what to do. And I got a new one in and it, I had to go to the doctor the next morning, but it, it, it was fine. I, I didn't go to the hospital that night, so uh, everything seemed to work out. <laughs> Um, but I don't advise doing that ever. That was the one and only time it's happened, and I'm very cautious. I always look if I'm going to grab the sheets now. I feel for the catheter first, then I go for sheets. Always find the catheter first. Alrighty. Um, I think that one's pretty much done. Now, is this one? One more question. Um, I think that's all the catheter questions I have here. Oh, well, one more, sorry. I'm trying to just keep them all sort of uh, condensed together. So another catheter question um, from Legitsters. Um, if you put your leg bag on your thigh with a super pubic catheter, will it cause problems? I'm afraid of it not going downhill. It'll make me piss myself and fuck that. <laughs> so I wear it on my calf even even when wearing shorts, which looks retarded. <laughs> uh, for sure, bro. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it actually doesn't bother it at all. It's pretty flat. I mean, unless, the only time I've worried about it, or I used to worry about it, was when I was in my rugby chair, because my rugby chair has a huge amount of bucket in it. So I, my butt is way, way below where my knees are. So in that case, I, I was a little worried about it, but it seems to be fine. I haven't had any issues. Um, when I have had a bladder infection or an issue, I have had a little bit of problem, like a little leakage where I did piss a little bit and it sucks. <laughs> um, but without a UTI or anything like that, just normal, healthy, everyday bladder life, uh, no, I don't have a problem with it at all. Um, in my regular everyday chair, I think it's pretty flat the way it runs. It might not have too much gravity to help it, but it's not forcing its way against gravity. So in the rugby chair, it might be a little bit, but it seems to work. I don't know if it's because my straps are pushing on my bladder and it's helping push it out. I, I don't really know, but uh, it doesn't seem to bother me much. And I, I, my bag fills up just fine. I don't pee, I can empty my bag. Everything seems to work out. Um, all right, so that's about it for my uh, catheter questions. Now I'm gonna skip, uh, Legitster has also asked about my rugby classification, uh, speaking of rugby. So I'm a, I'm a 0.5, which is the lowest functioning player basically. That means I have you know, no finger function, uh, no triceps. It's basically being a C5 quad <laughs> or C5, C6-ish quad. Uh, uh, bumping up to a one, I definitely don't have that function. Um, I've been classed three times. I'm a, a permanent 0.5 now. Um, and I'm, I'm on the kind of lower end of the 0.5 scale. So uh, yeah, that's what I am. And then uh, you, you also mentioned, sorry, on another post, um, or you applied back, I remember. I didn't print that out, sorry. But I remember you applied back that you were a one and kind of pissed about the getting classed. 
And that does suck. Sometimes you may end up getting class down. I've, I've met a lot of guys that ended up being class down like a half a point, um, going from like even twos to one fives and stuff, or one five one, uh, and and the one point five. So anything like you'll definitely it's possible to make the drop. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know how much function you have. I don't really know exactly. But if you have a little bit of tricep, that's probably where they're gonna get you for the one. Because if you're over, I think like a point seven five, basically, they're gonna bump you up into the one class instead of down to the 0.5 class. So that's probably why you got bumped up. Sorry, bro. <laughs> um, let's see here. I think you had one more question. Um, oh yeah, I'll save that one for last actually, sorry. And, all right, so that one's done. Um, actually, I think that's about it. Oh, and uh, I was gonna, uh, shout out to Abilities. Uh, that's, that, that is my buddy and he's really cool check his uh, channel and videos out too um, he left a comment about going to Palm Springs um, and, and maybe checking out a cool towel or bringing a spray bottle and that's actually why I'm it's so hot right now in the valley and that's actually why I waited so long to make my AMA video is it's been over a hundred for the last I don't even know almost two weeks um, yesterday and today are the first days that didn't break the triple digits but it's still like 93 degrees outside. It's hot as hell. It sucks balls. It's terrible. Uh, so I got the cool rag on around my neck, just kind of trying to stay a little cooler because it is hot in my house. I don't have really any AC. Uh, it's just a little portable in, in the living room, and it's not the yeah. We don't have much AC, so I, in the hot hot of the summer, I struggle for sure. That's why I need all that spray bottle and my rag and fans and stuff. Um, so. Uh, Last thing, oh, oh yeah, so last thing, or one of the, yeah, Legitsters also asked about doing my bow program independently. And I actually do plan to do a little bit more of a video for that, but for this video, I'm just gonna do a brief showing of kind of what I do. I don't do it independently anymore, just because it's just hard. <laughs> it takes a lot of effort and a lot of work. Uh, and I mean, I, I, I still can. I have when I've traveled by myself and done things. Um, or just in a pinch and I really need to but so so I will show you how to do it it's it's definitely something that is good to know how to do if you need to do it in an emergency but it is for somebody with my function it's pretty hard to do on a daily basis especially the suppositories I can't open the suppositories so what I would do for that is have somebody else open them the night before for me because those little packages are hard as hell to open um, and on that note I use magic bullet supposit suppositories you could Look them up and check them out if you want. Um, I'll try to put a link or something. So basically, here's my um, setup. Just I have basic surgical lubricant with an easy pop top thing, so I can pop it open, use it, no problem. Um, and then I just would use, I'll, I'll just grab like two paper towels is what I do and fold them, or just a small hand towel, and I'll actually just squirt that directly on there and make a little puddle for myself. And then for my suppository inserter, I have this guy, it's all, sorry, I get, after I get it cleaned, it gets like wrapped up and put away. So I just uh, try to unwrap it here and show you. If you haven't seen one before, it's basically, you can insert the suppository right into the end of it. Um, and then it has a spring. Oh, let me move forward. It has a uh, spring loader here on the side. So it actually, if you put the suppository in there, once it starts getting in, the spring loader pushes the tip out and it pushes it all the way up in. And so what I would do to insert it myself, I use actually one of these cosmetic mirrors here. Should. Oh my God. Not working out for me, hold on. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Okay. So now what I would do here is I would take this mirror. It's just one of those cosmetic mirrors. One side's just standard, whatever, and the other side's like 10 times, or I don't know, whatever the hell it is. 
but just use the standard side one. And what I would actually do with that is when I'm in bed, I will bend my knees up and fold the, roll them on my side so I'm on my hip, laying sideways on my hip with my knees bent. So basically my butt's exposed. <laughs> and then my ankle, my, my feet are right, basically right behind my ass. <laughs> so what I do then is I actually will take this and slide this part right here under my ankle. Like I'll slide it under the back part of my, of my ankle down there. So it's pointed at my butt, at the hole. So you can see it. Um, and then basically from there, I'm, I, I'm leaning on this elbow when I'm doing that. So I'm like leaned up. I'm not laying completely flat on my side. I'm on my elbow or my shoulder here. And then with this hand, what I do, I'll stick the, uh, this other way. Damn it. <laughs> there we go. Stick my hand through. It's got like a nice little sleeve. So it wraps, goes through your fingers and then wraps around your whole hand. So it's nice and locked in there. So then you basically would, I, what I'll do is have my paper towel on the side. I'll have the suppository already open because like I said, I can't open those. So I will have the suppository there and then I'll squirt the lube on the side of it with a little puddle. I'll scoop the suppository up with this, which isn't too hard, like on the bed on the thing and I'm leaning on my elbow. I'll scoop it up and then I'll just scoop it through the lube and go a couple times and try to get like all the angles so at least the whole tip is very covered and the tip of this plastic is pretty covered and then from there I basically can get a decent view from this mirror and it, it is a little bit it, it takes some practice you will break suppositories in the beginning um, anytime I was traveling on my own or doing it on my own I actually would make sure I have two open all the time just in case I broke the first one because on occasion it'll just break trying to get it in there you know it's just too hard uh, sometimes if you don't get it lined up perfectly straight, it, it won't go in straight. So it is difficult to do, uh, but it, it's doable for sure. Something like this, uh, I'm not even sure where I bought this. I've honestly had it for probably nine years or something and still the same one. Uh, just clean it every time. I don't know. Uh, it works. <laughs> um, so that's that pretty much right there. And that's how, that's how I would get it inserted. And then what I would do is transfer out and then get into the shower and stuff. And I had some... Other people ask me privately actually about like doing the check and having your caregiver do the check. But actually you could get something like this, which is a similar tool to that, but instead of having the opening on the end, it's just a, like a nice smooth rounded tip. So with that, I basically, when I'm in my shower bench, when I'm on the bench, I lift one leg up like I do when I'm stretching or taking my shoes off in the couch. I'll lift one of my legs up, place my ankle on uh, the other, like I'll lift my right leg up, place my ankle on the left leg here. So I have a nice like, so it's out this way and I have a nice big opening. And then from there, I can, uh, you get this on your hand, like same thing, but I do this one with the right hand. Um, the other one I do with my left, just cause I'm the way I lean and have learned it and done it. So with that, I'm able to, I'll do the same thing. I'll squirt lube actually like right on my leg or something when I'm in the shower. And then I can just like rub it through it and get it all wet, get it all done. And then from there I can get it under and up in there, do my own little check, pull it out. And I can just like toss it off to the side into the sink or shower. Um, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> so that's uh, a checker, a self checker if you're trying to do that. So that's a way, it, especially if you have a little bit more function, you can definitely do independent bowel routines. Like definitely. Um, it just was, hard I, I did it for almost six months just you know every monday wednesday friday that's when i do my bowel routine um i skipped the weekends and just uh, i started that in the hospital and have always done it and just kept that schedule it, it seems to work for me my, my body's adjusted to it for the most part um sorry it's kind of warm and you know it gets a uh, hot talking a lot <laughs> dry mouth all right, so, okay. That's pretty much it there for the bowel stuff and how you do that. I will try to make another video showing a little bit more. I'm gonna try to show my shower and stuff and how it's all set up. Um, but uh, lastly, I'm just gonna finish with um, Indie Sugar uh, Toothic. 
I think you're supposed to pronounce it too thick. <laughs> um, she asks a lot of questions, or always asking stuff. Um, but one of the things she wanted to know for for this AMA thing was uh, just um, do you know why most quads are men, and is it something to do with differences between how women and men body work, or is it just because men are biggest risk, ri bigger risk takers than women? Um, and uh, Simon Hills already uh, replied, risk taking for sure. And I definitely agree. Uh, I, I believe it's probably to do with risk taking for the most part. Um, usually guys are stupid adrenaline junkies and we do dumb shit. <laughs> uh, we're always willing to jump off something, go fast, do something, you know. So I think that's probably the main reason is just dudes are dumber and a little bit looking for more of like an, an adrenaline rush and things, especially at younger ages. You know, I got hurt when I just turned 21, so I was right there. I, that's all I wanted to do was go big, go fast, just go crazy. So um, that's pretty much, I think, the reason. I don't know if that has much to do with body. I do know a lot of quads that are fairly tall. A lot of people, it seems like they break their neck, are close to six foot. Like either like between 5'11 and even 6'4. I know quite a few guys that are over six foot. And uh, I'm 6'1", you know, so I don't know if that has to do, we have tall skinny necks, it breaks easier, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, you know, I think it's a, it's definitely a risk-taking thing, for sure. Guys are just dumber. <laughs> but, alright guys, um, I really hope you enjoyed the AMA here for this week, um, or Q&A, or whatever the hell. Um, uh, I'm going to try to do them again, maybe like once a month or so, and then maybe even see about doing like a live one, um, with the, using the YouTube Live. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'll keep everybody informed. I have a couple videos I'm editing and working on right now. So I'll have those out in the next probably week or so. And uh, I don't know guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a like, comment, questions, anything like that. Lift to roll guys, let's get a fist bump.